and she played professional basketball in the Greek first division for two seasons. So Elisa's going to talk about some basics on uh, team offense for youth basketball and throwing in a bit of other tidbits here and there. So Coach Lisa, Thanks, welcome, to, to, welcome to Winnipeg you. and uh, help me welcome Coach Lisa to the, to the program. What time do you have me on here for Adam? What time do you have me going until? So I starting at 2.40? Okay, something like that. Okay. You weren't supposed to say anything about us going to Brazil because I was going to ask and see how many people knew that uh, the men's national team qualified for the world championships next year by a show of hands. And how many people knew the women's team qualified? Now they do. Yeah. That's kind of a sad state of affairs considering these are our basketball coaches in, in the country and not even our basketball coaches know that um, our two national teams qualified. Um, but I think that's more of a state of the media than anything else. But anyways, our two senior national teams have qualified for world championships next year. Am I screaming at you guys too loud? which is a tremendous accomplishment for basketball in this country. And uh, as Adam said, I was very fortunate enough to be part of the staff that was with the women's team just, um, I guess it was last month in Brazil. And uh, for us to qualify, it was a tremendous accomplishment. We ended up, I'm going to tell you a little bit, a bit of a story about how we qualified, but uh, we, we ended up beating Cuba for the first time in 14 years at an international event. So that was, that was great for us. Um, I'm going to tell you a little story about, I'm sure, when Adam asked me to speak at this, at first I was kind of like, what am I going to talk about? Because I'm going almost at the very end, and I'm looking at everything that people are talking about before me, and I'm like, well, that's a pretty comprehensive <laughs> list of things, and what am I going to speak about? So I'm going to kind of give you a big mishmash of stuff, things that I've picked up over the last few years that we really try to incorporate in our practices with our university team, but at the same time, we also run a club program in Saskatoon for uh, young girls under 17, under 15, under 13. So hopefully some of that stuff will apply and, and will be, um, you know, relevant to what you're doing. Uh, at any rate, when, uh, I'm going to talk about special situations for a second. And, and has anyone talked to you this weekend over preparing for special situations? What you're going to do if you're up to don't have the ball and there's 10 seconds left. Has anyone talked about those types of things? Okay. Um, I think Mike was probably, Mike McKay, he spoke to you guys this morning, but he really emphasized to me over the last couple of years when he came out to work with our team about the importance of, of always working on special situations, not just for you as a coaching staff, but also for your players to start understanding the game a little bit better and having them think on the fly. And um, this past June with our national team, we went to Cuba for some exhibition games. And, sorry, what am I saying? We went to China. I've been to a bunch of places this summer. So we were in China, and we had played a three-game series against them. And it was game three. We had lost the first two games, but we were getting closer each time. And it was the fourth quarter. The game was going back and forth. We found ourselves up three with about 10 seconds to go. And we actually called a timeout. China had the ball on their baseline. Okay, so what are we going to do? We're up three. China is renowned for having guards that run around and can shoot threes from about six, seven, eight feet behind the three-point line. So we figure, well, we're not going to get in a situation where we're chasing these guards around and let them get a three-point shot off. So we call our timeout. Okay, girls, we're going to let them get the ball over half court, use as much time as possible off the clock, and then we're going to foul them. And the idea being, obviously, they go the line and shoot two. We're up three. We've got this. So we foul them, put them on the line, and they sub in their uh, six foot eight woman off the bench. And her name's Weiwei, and she's, she's long. So she goes in. Okay, no worries. We get our best, best defensive rebounder lined up next to her, strongest woman. So they make the first. Okay, no worries. She goes up, misses the second. So six foot eight crosses right in front of the rim and kind of clears out two of our defenders. The other big on the floor crosses in front and takes out her other person that's supposed to be blocking her out. And a little guard who is right here. You guys probably talk about your point guards who are supposed to line up outside the three-point line and the job that they have to do on a free, on a free throw is being taken is actually block someone out here, right? Not just stand and watch the shot. 
Well, we stood and watched the shot, and their Chinese guard came flying in. They missed the shot perfectly, went out off to the left side, and this guard gets it, lays it in. Crap. <laughs> Game's tied. They actually ended up beating us. So fast forward to end of September. So we're like, okay, no worries. We were together only three weeks. We maybe talked a little bit about that situation. We'll have it covered for when the world qualifier rolls around. So fast forward to the end of September. We have to finish in the top three to qualify for the world championships next year. So we made it into the top two in our, pool, in our side. We crossed over and we lost to Argentina. So we're in the bronze medal game against Cuba, a team that we lost to uh, three, sorry, we lost two out of three times in Cuba earlier this summer. So we're down, end up coming back, game's close, back and forth, fourth quarter. And we've got possession, and just, oh, I think there's maybe 30 seconds left in the game. That's a tie game. Come down, use a lot of clock, 2.8 seconds to go, our forward hits a three. 2.8, we're going crazy, awesome. Bench erupts, Cuba has a timeout in. Okay, we've been here. <laughs> we're up three, they have the ball at half court, 2.8 seconds to go. So based on past experience, we're not gonna foul. <laughs> we're gonna let them try and make a three with 2.8 to go. So she has it here. I run a simple down screen on ball side, pop a girl up, I've got someone right there, we don't want to foul a three-point shooter. She comes up, fakes, steps in, hits it at the buzzer. So we're tied. Going into overtime, their team erupts. Just, they all stampede half court, you'd think they won the game, they actually just tied it. But anyways, uh, at the end of the story, as you know, we ended up beating them in overtime 11-1. So we qualified with, uh, in dramatic fashion, that's for sure. But I guess the moral of the story is, as much as you can kind of prepare for those special situations, and as much as you need to prepare for those special situations and have your players understand, you know, time and score and certain things that are going on in the game, sometimes, you know, luck or fate or the better athletes take over. Or in the case of China, six foot eight, there's not much you can do when our tallest player is six four, you know, and they can come in and clear things out. But anyways, that's my story about the world, world qualifier and about uh, preparing for things like that. So I was gonna talk a little bit about motion offense. And I'm not too sure how interested you guys are in hearing about motion offense, but maybe I'll, I'll give it a go and see where we, where we are. Again, I have no clue how advanced or how you know, basic you want me to start here. So really, if you have any questions about what I'm saying, if you are like, Lisa, you're crazy, what are you talking about? Just yell at me or put up your hand. I'd, I'd welcome questions, comments as I kind of go through this. With emotion offense, and like I said, we, we use this at university level, we use it at national team level, and we use it with, um, at the club level too, so youth. So it's certainly not something that is only for, you know, the elite athletes or the, the, the players who've been playing the game for a long period of time. Why would you use a motion offense? Um, from, from my standpoint, it really teaches players how to play the game. It's a very conceptually based offense that relies on rules, principles, and foundations as opposed to set plays where maybe your players only learn, you know, one position, they learn how to down screen here, cross screen, come off, and they're looking for the shot, as opposed to spacing, timing, ball reversal, all of those um, principles that relate to good sound offense, team offense. So I'll take you through some of this stuff. Oh, I guess the other, <laughs> coming from Saskatchewan, we have some of the same challenges as you guys have here in Manitoba. And again, another reason why we use motion. Um, we, uh, I get a lot of players every year that contact me and, and want to try out for our team. And I'll, I'll ask them, okay, well, how tall are you and what position do you play? 
I can't tell you how many people over the years, how many girls. Well, I'm 5'8 and I play forward. 5'8 in Canada West is a small point guard. So, and I think really it's a product of kids who might have been taller when they're younger and they've been put down on the low block and they're a forward and that's kind of where they play over the course of their career and don't really get to play outside the paint, don't get to play outside the three-point line and understand the game at that level. So for us, we, motion is a way of um, having individual players learn the game from several different perspectives, okay? Yes, they can post up, yes, they can play outside the three, they learn to dribble, they learn to pass, they learn to make decisions, regardless of how big or small they are. So our specific motion offense that we use is a four out, one in, but you could also use a five out offense, okay? Depending on, again, your personnel. So if you have no big kids, it's not a big deal. It doesn't mean that you put, you know, your widest body down there. It just might mean that you're gonna want to spread the floor a little bit more. So maybe I'll get some of our helpers up. So let's get, um, let's get four, any four people, just come on up for me. So uh, probably the most important offensive principle that um, we talk about is spacing. We do a lot of four on four, four on O oh team offense. So just as far as where we want to space the floor. So I want one, one person here, another one over here, and two on the wings, please. Okay, so if you want to go, if you want to go four round one, if you do have a post player, again, this is how you'd position the floor. These, we call these spots the swings, sorry, or the high elbow. Okay, because they're positioned off the elbow, but just extended up. And then these are our wings. We like to bring the wings just a little bit lower than the free throw line extended. Okay, so you can see the floor is really well spaced. And if you have a post, you can put them in to begin, but not necessarily keeping them inside all the time. So with our four out one in, our big who starts in doesn't stay in there. She stays in for a second, two seconds, and then she's always coming out. So the person who's in is always interchangeable. Let's have one more player come up for me, please. So if you wanted to go five out, then the spacing just becomes, yeah, come on up here with the ball. So we've got our point, and then we slide our wings down to the corner, and there's how we're spaced. Okay? Okay, let's go back to four out. One in, and I'll have you slide over. If you can leave the ball, that'd be great. Okay, so some of our principles in terms of movement. Whenever the ball is passed from the point to the wing, okay, this is always going to be a basket cut. Whether you cut in front of your defender or behind your defender, he or she must get to the rim quickly. Okay, you're never going to fight the defense. So what I mean by that is if the defender jumps to the ball, okay, and she goes to cut, we're not going to continue to try and fight, fight, fight all the way down the lane. It's one step and gone, okay? And we talk a lot about every cut must be a scoring cut. So you're not just cutting through the paint just because that's what coach tells you what to do. You're cutting with the intent to always receive a return pass. So as soon as you have that quick give and go, okay, what's your name? Brittany. So Brittany goes, if Brittany cuts with the intent to receive the return pass, what happens on the weak side of the defense is that I have to respect that. So if I'm guarding Tanisha, I can't just hang out over here. I have to be aware that Brittany might be getting a return pass, which makes me suck in, which also opens up the skip pass. Okay, so Getting your players to cut hard, easier said than done, but really driving home the point that unless they're ready to receive the return pass, they're not helping out their team. Okay? Okay, so the ball goes. We're making our, our basket cut. And she goes right to the rim. She sees the ball the whole way. Okay, so even when you get to the front of the rim or underneath, you're opening and you're going to be ready to exit away. We're blasting across to receive the return pass up top. As soon as you get rid of it, you're sliding to space. Okay, so the idea being every time you give up the ball, I feel like I'm really loud here. Every time you give up the ball, there's something that you're looking to do. 
You're trying to get behind your defender, trying to get your defender to turn her head, turn his or her head. If you get your defender to turn their head, you've won the battle. Okay, so whether that means you might back cut them, whether it means you might ball cut them, um, you've done your job because now you're occupying a defender, not allowing them to poach or help. Okay, so she would slide or back cut or look to ball cut me, but she's staying in space. Ball's then going to get reversed. So Tanisha's coming all the way up nice and high. Yep. So now we've reversed the ball. If we get into any screening action, then what we want is the ball being held at the high elbow. And now these two players are going to be involved with some type of screen. So whether it's a flare screen, whether it's a down screen, whether your big is here setting an up screen. Okay, but this is where all the action is happening. Our wing on this side over here is just going to stay in space. Okay, Tanisha might be able to penetrate because the ball's been reversed. Okay, and if not, she's looking to this side of the floor. And if all else fails, then she can complete the reversal to the wing. Okay, and then what happens when the ball's passed to the wing? Let's get you up a little bit higher, Brit. Brittany, right? Yeah. What are you going to do, Tanisha? Cut hard, right? Right to the rim. Okay, and as much as we can get down the center of the lane, ask him for the ball, that's what we want. Okay, again, this cut flushes the defense. Okay, so it, it brings a help side defender in that has to respect her cut, and this also opens up a lane for Brittany to be able to penetrate middle. Okay, and that's what we want. We want middle penetration, make the defense collapse, and now we've got our shooters out on the perimeter. Okay. Let's go through this, girls. So let's get, just come on back into our spacing. We don't have time to go through complete breakdown of motion. Here we go. Good, we're going to cut right to the rim. Reverse it. One more. Yep, you can complete it. We're going. Yep. You're okay. Come on back. Come on back. Come on back, Tanisha. You're doing exactly what I said, but I didn't clarify here. Let's put the ball back here. Okay, so every time we pass, we talked about taking advantage of that defender. Just come on up. So if you pass across to Tanisha and you basket cut, that's great. Go, go, go hard right to the rim. You'd be filling. Okay, we can come here or go there. Yep, Tanisha's going. We're looking for her. Good, reverse the ball. Come on back up. You're going right to the rim. Yep, come on up. Good. Ball gets your pass and cut. Okay? So motion in its simplest form is pass and cut. Okay? Whether that's four round one, whether that's five out, after you pass, cut hard. Okay? So this is just, like I said, like the quick Coles Notes version of motion with four out. Does anyone have any questions or want more clarification on that? Way too simple and want me to move ahead? Do you want to understand screening action out of this or do you want me to move forward? Okay. So let's get our ball up here. So when the ball is passed across the top, I said after we pass, we cut. Okay. In this case though, when the ball gets passed to Tanisha, you're going to take a step as if you're cutting, but now we're going to initiate some screening action. The rules being the players who are on the wing they are the ones that are going to control what type of screen happens. Okay, so all... What's your name? Carrie. Carrie. So when... What's your name? Megan. Megan. Put the ball back to Megan. When Megan has the ball, Carrie is going to start communicating with Megan right away. So she is going to say one of two things. We're going to keep this simple. Carrie is going to say, Megan, come get me, or Megan, use me. Okay? And depending on what she says is going to determine what screening action takes place. So if Carrie says, come get me, that means that she's going to slide to space. Megan, you're going to pass, and you're going to come get her on a down screen. Okay? So you're going to go. You're going to first cut in case your defender doesn't jump to the ball. Okay, come on back to that. So I just want you to take, like, one step and then set your down screen. Okay, so I'm defending her. So you're going to come screen me. There you go. Good, so that's your down screen. Okay, now Carrie's gonna read this screen, and she can do a number of things, depending on what the defender does. So she can curl, 
And now you're going to second cut. Good. Okay, put the ball back. Okay, she might just fill, so let's do the same thing. Down screen. I uh, run into the screen and you're going to pop up. Good. And you would either roll on me, yep, or second cut. Come on back up. Okay, if teams switch, then you would start to down screen and you would actually slip the screen to the hoop. Good, and carry pop up. Okay, so always two cutters coming off of screening action. So that's just down screen. Come on back. If Carrie said, Megan, use me, then she's going to set a flare screen. Okay, so a flare is, you start again, you're going to cut to the hoop, two steps, and then you're up, setting a flare. Great. So her back is, is going to be pointed towards the corner. Megan, you're going to look to use the screen, so you're going to step to the hoop first, and then you're going off shoulder to shoulder, or shoulder to hip off the screen, looking to receive the ball outside the three-point line. Okay, so that would be a flare screen. So you step, go off, good, nice and wide, and we're looking for that. Okay, and again, depending on what she does, determines what the screener does. I, don't, I didn't really want to get into too much screening action because it could be like a three-hour clinic itself, just on down screens and reads and things like that. Anyone have any specific question about the down or the flare? Is this confusing or is this... Yes? Right. So with your four out, one in. So if I'm the post, let's put the ball back up. Depending on what kind of post you have. So if you've got someone who can dominate inside, then I'd say put her right here, okay, on ball side. We, t we have bigs who can shoot the ball and can sometimes score in the paint, <laughs> but not all the time. So we want them... Our back court is better than our front court. Don't tell them that. So we'll have them set a lot of up screens. So the pass will be made. I'll come up and set an up screen. She goes to the hoop. I second cut. Okay. Yep. And now I can shoot this. Okay, so that's where I want our bigs, is second cutting, getting our smalls going to the, going to the rim. Oh, Tanisha. Come on back up. Okay, we'll set an up screen, or we'll set back screens here. So you'll notice with the ups and then with the backs, the first cutter is always going to the rim, okay? So if they come open on a screen, they're receiving a pass for a layup. Instead of down screens where, okay, I might get open, but the best I'm gonna get is, a, is maybe a challenge three, okay? So especially for younger kids, these back screens and up screens are awesome, okay? Now, you can also start your big up top. So you can start them on the same side, you can start them weak side, you can put them in the middle of the lane, they might enter, and now you can back screen right here. Okay, you can basically put them anywhere you want. Okay, they, if they're up high, you can set a ball screen right here, and then you're playing off penetration. Hope, does that help at all? Okay, anything else with respect to screening action? Okay. So then the other part with motion is that you're relying on your, your players to be able to try to break down their check. Not even break down, it might just be catch and go to the rim. So playing off penetration, okay? So let's put the ball to the wing. So we will position people. If you baseline drive, girls, where would you go? If your teammate baseline drives, where would you go? Okay. So we've got a baseline drift. Depending on who this is, we will either spot them up at the 45 or dive them to the rim. Let's say you're going to dive to the rim. And then same side would typically follow, okay, right in behind. So it'd be on a baseline drive. How many of you heard the expression penetrate, pass, pass? One? Okay. Penetrate, pass, pass is like biblical for our team. <laughs> Anytime you get, a, you get penetration, what you want is to, so penetration is going to hopefully cause the defense to collapse, okay? And if they don't collapse, it means you're going to the rim to score. 
So uh, let's say on the baseline drive, can we get four defenders up, four black? Because we've, oh, actually. Let's get two more whites and two more blacks up. So white team's on offense for me. Can black team go D? This is boring, isn't it? <laughs> okay, baseline drive. Typical defense is set up here, so if there's a baseline drive, Tanisha's going to help, right? Okay, show me where you're going to go. Okay, stop, stop, stop. We're just going to hold you here right now. Where are you going to go? So you're dropping in to cover off these two, correct? So if we penetrate, and now we make a pass from it. So you can go, good. One pass out, what are we getting now? We're getting a long closeout, depending on how quick the defense is. They might get out there pretty quickly. Just sneak back there for me. If we make the extra pass, that's the one that teams defensively have a hard time getting out to. Usually they can cover off the first pass and get there. By the second pass though, yep, send it. Now you've got a long closeout. That's what basically we as a team, we are always trying to get, is to create a long closeout. So whether that's penetrate, pass, pass, because the most difficult skill in basketball at the defensive end is a closeout. So if you can create a long closeout situation at the offensive end, that's going to increase your chances of either a wide open shot or you're going to be able to penetrate and go by. Okay? For us, typically, it's going to be an open shot, but another penetration off of two passes is okay. Penetrate, penetrate. As soon as we do that in practice, it's a guaranteed automatic turnover. Okay? Because you just penetrated, you just collapsed the defense, you pass the ball and you penetrate again, it doesn't make any sense. Okay, you're going back right into the defense that just collapsed to start to stop the initial penetration. Does that make sense to, sense to everyone? All good. So penetrate, pass, pass. If you don't remember anything from what I say, I'd say that's probably the best piece of advice I can give from the offensive perspective. Okay, thanks, D. You guys can go off. Okay, we're winding down here. Uh, I'm just going to give you a few, I'm not going to talk anything more about motion offense because I just wanted to give you just a general sort of overview. I want to talk about some individual skills that we really emphasize and focus on that might not be traditional fundamental skills, I guess. I lost my Kleenex. Sorry. First one is underhand finish. Okay, if you go and watch I don't have it there either. If you watch any European teams warm up, pretty much anyone, anyone except for North American teams, they're all doing layups, underhand finish. No one comes in like this and scores a layup. Okay? So we have really incorporated this and really tried to drive it home with our young players that, you know, well, I'll ask you guys. How many times have you seen breakaway layup? Kids are going in, flying in, overhand finish, boom, boom. Ball comes rocketing off the glass, okay? Because they can't take enough off the ball going overhand after the speed that they've generated horizontally, go up overhand, it's darn near impossible to soften that shot up enough to be a guaranteed layup. So we work a ton on, and it's, it's not going to be pretty at the start. Okay, it's just this. Basically just underneath the hoop, one step. Just getting the feel for underhand finish. The other thing, the last time I demonstrated, I rolled my ankle, so I better be careful. You can also get back here. I mean, you can underhand finish, obviously. Come on back here for me. He can probably get to the rim in one dribble. Step back. Probably from there. No problem. One dribble, he can get to the rim on an underhand finish. Just go for me. Show me. Was that a travel, Cheryl? Come on back. Yeah. So you got three steps. Okay? So you're going to go left, right, left, and score it. Go ahead. One dribble, three steps. Left, right. Oh! <laughs> Come 
going back one more time. <laughs> Dude, you got three steps. Okay, so your first step, no, step with your left leg for me. So start facing the hoop in a parallel stance. And go left and dribble it. And then right, left and go up. Yeah, you got it. Yep, go for it. That's all right, that's all right. <laughs> Have a seat. <laughs> okay, so that's how we would start, is literally underneath the rim, getting that feel. Okay, right hand, left hand, just nice and soft off the glass. Back it up, same way as you do with your regular overhand layups. Question. How, how old are the kids that are off on that? Well, last year we had kids that were probably 10. Yeah, what age are you coaching? Okay, try it. Like I said, it's gonna be really ugly at the start and they're gonna be like, boom. Yeah. Yeah, so I'd say start working on that too. And again, what we say is anytime you've gone by your defender and you have a step on them, that's how you should be finishing. That's the only way that the defender can't get a hand on the ball is if you stretch out in front. If you bring the ball here, they can get a hand on it. Okay, and I'm not saying you go underhand finish when the defense is in front. What I'm saying is if you have a step, if it's a breakaway, that's how you go and it's gonna be nice and soft and your kids will like it. And it's, this is one thing we did in the clinic probably about five years ago and we had coaches say, well, those are fancy layups. Why are you teaching them to be fancy? Well, it's functional, it's effective. It works. And like I said, everyone except for North Americans, that's how, that's I think probably the first way they teach layups is the underhand finish. Okay. Along with that, I think the CPs are working on this a lot too, is going into it like creative finishes. So when you go into contact, so now I don't have a step on my defender, okay, but I've got my defender on my hip going outside, inside foot powering it up and taking the contact okay we always want to play for an and one situation we always want a three-point play so any way we can get that or how you get that is you have to be able to finish with contact there's going to be contact in basketball and what I say to our offensive players is if you put the ball down and you try and go around the defense you're gonna get bumped at some point you're also going to allow the defender to cut you off if there's gonna be contact, why don't you be the initiator of the contact, okay? So if you can be the initiator, you're gonna be ready for it. You're gonna put the defender back on his or her heels. And not only that, you're gonna be able to take a sharp angle to the hoop, okay? So what I mean by that, can I just have a defender up? You can deem me up. Let's maybe go here. So I'm not too sure if you can see this, but our first step, again, really wide stance on offense. Okay, so we're not playing here. I want our players playing here. So when I go by, I'm working on, just play me flat. Okay, my first step is gonna be at her knee or at her foot. So I wanna get here, okay? So if I'm going to the rim, toe to the rim. Okay, I'm going straight line, I'm initiating the contact. It's a really tough thing to do, we're like, I'm trying to incorporate this and teach this at the university level only because our players haven't been done, haven't been taught this and haven't really worked on it effectively when they've been coming along and up through the system. So just come on back. So a lot of our players, I wanted to do this. Well, she just slides with me. Okay, she can still beat me to a spot. But if I get her leg, if I get here, she can't cut me off anymore. It's done. Okay, and now, guess what, underhand finish, and she can't get at it. Okay, um, the other thing we'll do, you go on offense for me. Okay, so defensively, what we focus on too is, I always have a hand on the ball. Actually, go sideways. Okay, so when I'm Ding her up, just go sideways for me. Like, yeah, depending on what side of her body she has the ball on, that hand is on top of it, okay? So ball pressure for me is not this. That doesn't put her under any duress at all. 
She can still see past me. She can still dribble. She doesn't have to worry about me at all. As soon as I start doing this, she's going to be worried about me. Okay? It doesn't mean I get all up in her and get crazy. It's just this. She puts the ball to the other side of her body. I'm here. She puts it up above her head. I'm right here. So if she brings it down, okay, or she brings it low, okay, I'm right here on the ball. Okay, so that to, to us is ball pressure. Okay, so getting right up, getting a hand on the ball. If she's thinking about me as a defender, she can't be picking apart our defense, locating the open player. Okay, so not just, we call this airplane defense. Okay, got the two wings out, or even this. Okay, yeah. It also really helps defensively. If you don't have a size advantage, but you can get your hand, like, so reverse the rolls here. If you stand and have both hands up, that's really not going to make too much of a difference. Okay, I'm still going to be able to pass through her. But if she puts her hand on the ball, okay, right on top. There you go. Don't open your, don't change your stance though. Yeah, you're, so you're still in good defensive stance, but you just have your hand on it. Yeah. So it makes it a lot tougher for me to move the ball and create a passing lane. Okay, thanks. That was a little bit easier than the underhand finish demo, eh? <laughs> okay. Oh, the other thing. Tanisha, come on out here for me again. Just play right there. We talk a lot about um, penetrating. And goodness forbid, I might get off on one foot and throw a pass. We practice these. So if we go baseline drive, and it's one dribble, I'm getting up in the air, and I'm throwing it to the shooting spot right now. Okay, or the 45, or whatever you want to call it. As soon as I drive baseline, one defender's going to have to come, the other one's starting to drop, I'm getting up in the air, and sending it right there. Okay? The other thing we'll do, can you do the same thing? Can you go one dribble for me to the middle? You're going to go middle drive, one dribble, get up in the air, and you're going to pass back to me. Okay, I'm going to lift up. Yep. Off one foot. Lift. Good. Do you think that pass will go through? Where's your defender going to be? So if you drive middle, it's because I'm here, right? Are you going to be able to push pass? So that's why you got to get up in the air. Okay? So we talk a lot about penetrating one way, and now coming back with counteraction, passing to the, to the offensive teammate <clears throat> opposite the penetration. Okay, so she's gonna go, I lift up, there you go. Okay, and I'm gonna knock it down. So why would she pass back here? She's gotta be able to see it. Yeah, I'm not saying go up blind, oh, then try and find someone. So if you drill your playing off penetration principles, someone's in the corner, she goes middle, she knows her teammate's going to be here. The other thing is if she goes middle, the natural reaction defensively is she goes here if I'm defending where I was, I'm going to start sinking in here. So if she blasts up on an eye cut, that's open. Now we've created that long closeout. Okay, thanks. Any questions about that? Any other questions? Makes sense? Okay. Tanisha. <laughs> and, yeah, so you have the ball. So let's say the ball got reversed to me. Tanisha was in help. This is a really long closeout. Okay, so she's coming from almost underneath the rim to close out to me on offense. That's darn near impossible to, to take everything away. Okay, so she's going to give something up. She's either going to break down and either not close out tight enough, so I'm going to have my shot, or she's going to come out too tight, I'm going to be able to penetrate by her. So that's what I was saying is like the most difficult defensive thing fundamentally to do is effectively close out to the ball and take away penetration pass shot. You're welcome. Anything else? Okay. Yeah, am I over time here? Okay. One more.
I got one more. Want to play D? Come on down here. Okay. So I kind of was a post when I was a player. So <laughs> I'm not big enough now to ever be a post, but in the paint, we are finding that internationally, university level, we're quite undersized, okay? So for us to finish in the paint, we have to go up off two feet, okay? Because if I just turn and I have any contact, I'm gonna get pushed off my line and I'm gonna fade away and now I'm a finesse player and we're not gonna draw any contact. So like I said, I'm always trying to get a three-point play in here. So we'll work on double pivots. So if I, I'll just do it coming to the baseline. But if I was to get Tanisha sealed off, I'm going to go one and then two and take it to the rim. Now, you might say, well, what kind of shot fake is that? It's completely effective, actually. Okay, so my first pivot is just to get the contact, one, and then I go two and finish it. So we do a lot of that kind of stuff where it's not just one and fade away. Again, I don't have any more time, but that's, that was another thing that we work a lot on fundamentally with your bigs, but also with your smalls. Getting position, maintaining contact, okay, getting your balance like Cheryl talked about, and then being able to finish. Okay. Thank you very much for your attention. Hopefully you got something out of that. This is really great to see this kind of turnout. Thanks, Coach. Really appreciate your time this afternoon. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, we're going to do a, a one quick door prize, then we actually have a special award we want to hand out to a person in the crowd here. So, Coach Lisa, if you could grab a, we'll do a two, two of them right now. So if you can grab two tickets out. Uh, boy, this is a tough one to read. Richard Lyons? Ricardo Lyons? Brockard, there you go. Sorry about that. Uh, Bison shirt, coaching Manitoba shirt, Reebok shirt, and a coaching Manitoba uh, board. And our next one, uh, Chris Barron, Greendale Community Center. Chris, at the back there, great. And Chris gets a basketball Manitoba golf shirt, an NBA shirt, a Reebok shirt, and a coaching Manitoba board. There you go, Chris. Congratulations. All right, like I said, I just uh, we have a special award that we uh, were uh, proud to be able to hand out. One of the uh, sponsorship supports that we received for hosting this clinic was from Investors Group, and this is a connection through the Coaches Association of Canada, and they're one of the sponsors of the Investors Group Volunteer Sport Administrator Award. Uh, the award recognizes the contribution to community sport programs made by a dedicated volunteer who has given countless of hours of their time so that coaches and athletes can enjoy the benefits of a well-organized sport. Uh, our winner today demonstrates outstanding commitment and service to administrative capacity for a local club here in Winnipeg, uh, which results in a strong impact in the community for coaches and athletes. The recipient today will automatically become eligible for the Investors Group National Volunteer Sport Award, and uh, which is presented annually at the Sport Leadership Awards Dinner, uh, typically in, in, in Ottawa. Assisting me today uh, with the presentation from Investors Group is uh, uh, Lee Hurton with Winnipeg Minor Basketball. Uh, she's going to speak uh, briefly on the, uh, on the recipient today and uh, present the award. So I'll turn it over to, uh, cut note here, turn it over to Lee. You must be talking too much on this thing, it's cutting out on you. Uh, the recipient of this award this year truly goes above and beyond what it means to be a volunteer in our league. Uh, he ensures that every child not only has an opportunity to play, but also ensures that that opportunity is a positive one for them throughout their career. In addition to being a volunteer convener for the past uh, seven years, I think, he's also a league board member as well as his own club president. So this year's recipient goes to none other than Terry Wallowick. <laughs> Come on down.
Thanks and uh, congratulations, Terry. Well deserved. Okay, we'll do one more door prize. Then we have one more left. Then we have the big one. So Sherwin Vassallo is our next presenter. Oh, he's still setting up. So I will, I'll get lead.